when you get a spell of good weather in Scotland, you really do have to try and take advantage of it. And I hadn't been on a wild camp for a while, and I didn't have too much time, so I decided to head to a relatively close hill and do a summit camp. So I headed up the A9 and into the hills of Perthshire, with my intended target filling the windscreen and looking spectacular. I couldn't wait. Oh, what a lovely day. It was 22 degrees when I parked the car and the car park's just there. I've literally just left. And I'm in Highland Perthshire today. And I'm going up here. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder. You can actually see the path scarring its way up to the top. Up to, to the top. And I've been up here loads of times before, but I've never wild camped up here. And the weather's just so good at the moment. I thought I'd just get out and enjoy it and uh, have a wee summit camp on the top. So I'm going to head up there. I've got loads of time, it is about 3 o'clock perhaps and sunset isn't until about half 9 and it doesn't get dark to about half 10 so I've got loads of time I'm going to amble my way up and just enjoy it <clears throat> find a nice wee pitch and yeah, have a nice wee wild camp so let's go I left the car park and the sun was shining and I was soon on the estate track, which yeah, takes you about two kilometres in and it's, it's nice and easy going, takes you through a field of sheep and, and cows and what have you and before long you reach a small hut which really starts at the beginning of the, the hill walk just before it starts to get steep and you start to work those thighs. Ooh, well, I'm at the, uh, the wee hut here, as you can see taking a wee bit of shelter, there's a nice wee cooling breeze which is just to uh, cool me down nicely and if I spin round you'll be able to see where I'm going there's the hill a bit closer now and this this kind of marks the start of the actual hill walk this shed there's a wee bit of flat to go over it's, it's sometimes quite boggy there but once you're over there you're onto the hillside and heading straight up for the summit of Carnley so I'm going to uh, I'm going to crack on and of course the last time I was here I think I was here about two years ago it was a bit colder and I'd got up super early and I'd got up to the top for sunrise, and what a beautiful sunrise I'd got. If I get skies like that tomorrow morning, I'll be happy. But I remember coming down here, and the temperature rose, and I sat just in this wee bit of grass, and had this mackerel sky above me. It was absolutely glorious. So I'm really hoping I get something similar on this trip. So far, so good. So enough talking. Let's get walking. Well, it's warm. And I've just noticed all these bags of rocks. Initially I thought they'd been dumped by a helicopter and unfortunately one of the one of the things about this hill that it's well known for is its path is very badly eroded. You, you can probably see over my shoulder going up the, this, the front of the hill and it's the one thing you notice as you're coming down or up the A9 when you look over to Beneglow is this big scar going up the front of Carnley. So I've come up here. I think there may be a regeneration or a, a path, uh, I don't know if you call it regeneration, uh, path improvement plan, maybe to try and uh, stop that path from eroding anymore and there's these bags of stones and I initially thought they'd maybe been dropped off by helicopter but further analysis, I think the dike that ran up here is being uh, dismantled and all the rocks from that are being put in the bags and then I presume they'll be moved up the, the hill probably by helicopter. Anyway, there's a couple of guys working up here so I might stop and have a chat to them see if that is what's happening. I might be completely wrong. <laughs> Anyway, it's still lovely. It's a lovely breeze. It's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let's get going. I've just stopped having a wee break. I've not, even, I've not even hit the steepest part. In fact, if I look down there, you can see I've just really started heading up the hill. And I stopped, there was a couple of guys doing the path down there and they uh, confirmed what I thought, they are uh, dismantling or recycling the old dry stone dikes and uh, the, 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 rocks, the rocks that they recycle will be getting flown up the, the hillside a wee bit more and they're hoping to be done by the end of the summer. So, this may be the last time I'm on this hill with this uh, unsightly scar going up at the, they might get it done by the next time I'm uh, back up here, who knows, I might be up before of course. But it's lovely, it's a wee bit of hazy, I can see Shahalian and over mother's shoulder there is Ben Varaki, the hill that I've got up lots and lots. I just hope this haze maybe drops a wee bit towards uh, sunset once you get the pitch up there. It's a wee bit blowy, I think, I think it could be quite uh, breezy up there, it is forecast to be about 15 mile an hour wind so I might have to try and find a wee bit of shelter. It might not be right in the summit that I can't, I'll see, I'll see when I get up there, see what it's like. But can't really complain at this.
Absolutely gorgeous. Woo! So up I went, then I was just ambling along. There was no rush. And at this point there has been some work done to the path and it did make the going a lot better and easier. Well they've done a really grand job. I didn't realise they've actually started the path and it's been a lovely path in comparison to what it used to be. All these blocks have been put in, it's almost like a nice nice stairway, much easier to walk up than the, the scree that was there before. It's just getting eroded, but at this point here, oh, you maybe not see me, I'll go down a bit. But this point here is the uh, is the end of the path, and or, or the the new path, and I'm back into the old path now. So I'm gonna have to suck it up and start heading up here. But I'll be grand when this is all, this is all finished. It has made the going a lot better, and hopefully it'll prevent some of the erosion. Right, about another 200 meters to go, and it is a little bit more breezy than I thought it was. <laughs> Could could be problematic in a wee while when I'm trying to find the pitch, but let's get to the top and see. <laughs> At this point, the path upgrade stops and you're back on the old path. And I must admit, it's a lot harder going. There's kind of loose stones that you can twist your ankle on, and it's a bit scree like, so you're, you're skating about the place a wee bit, especially with that big heavy backpack on. Anyway, I was soon up the steepest section and heading towards the summit and before long the two cairns came into view. There is a trig point that you hit first if you're coming from this direction and it's not actually the, the true summit. You can see the big cairn, I don't know, a few, a few metres to the uh, east which marks the true summit. But it's a lovely viewpoint. At this point the skies were still blue and there was a wee bit of fair weather cloud and things were looking, things were looking good. And I headed over to the main summit before scouting out the area which I always do try to find a pitch. And it was lovely. The views over to the rest of the Beneglo Massive were just spectacular. Well, that's me on the summit of Karn Lake. And it's breezy. I don't know if you can pick if the microphone's picking it up or not. But I've now got a view of the whole of the rest of the Beneglo Massive, the two bigger peaks which I'm not going to do today, I'm going to be lazy. And priority number one now is finding a pitch out of the wind. It's quite a stiff southeasterly breeze. It's warm, but uh, if I don't get some shelter, I'm going to have a pretty sleepless night. So let's go and find a pitch. Woo, what a place and what a view. Fantastic. Wow. After reaching the summit, I took off that big heavy rucksack, oh boy it felt good, and then started the usual ritual which I go through when I do a wild camp, and that usually involves scouting out the area and walking around trying to find a relatively flat piece of ground, and it's really quite hard on, on most summits to find something which is, is flat, that's why I always say using a good ground mat is essential if you're wanting to do summit camps because it irons out any of those lumps and bumps and rocks and tussocky grass. So once I'd done that, I got set about getting the tent up, and it was lovely. It was a bit windy, but the views were lovely, the sun was shining, and I was feeling quite pleased with myself. I wasn't too far from the summit either, I'd managed to get a wee bit of shelter just, just off the summit. And I finished putting up the tent, and decided to sit and enjoy the sunshine. Ah. Ooh. Oh, I'll go down here. Ah. Oh, what a view. Well, as you can see, I've now found my pitch behind me, pretty close to the summit. And it is a bit breezy. If it picks up anymore, I think I'm going to have a pretty uncomfortable night's sleep. But it's not often you get really still days on the top of Monroe's. Uh, this is the smallest Monroe out of the three Monroe's that are found on Beneglow. And I've been up here quite a few times and you get some lovely views. It's a bit hazy today, I can't really see that far to the north. I can make out some of the Cairngorms, mainly because there's patches of snow on them and the white showing through the haze. But the main, uh, the main view that I can see is behind you, which is over here to the other two mountains of uh, Beneglow. But it's lovely. Uh, it's about 6.30 now, 7 o'clock, so I'm going to get some tea on. I've uh, got something different from a tea tonight. I've not got my chicken tikka, <laughs> which you're accustomed to seeing me. I was a bit lazy today and uh, I'd run out of chicken tikka, so I just bought something at the supermarket. So I will report back and let you know how that goes. 
But it's just lovely. It's just nice getting out and uh, enjoying some half decent weather for a change. Right, time for tea. Let's get it done. Ugh. Right, where are you, stove? I got some shelter behind the big summit cairn and I got the stove on and set about making my different tea. It certainly wasn't chicken tikka, <laughs> just a pot noodle. But you know what? It tasted good. There's something about food that you have on wild camps and coffee. If you were to make them at home in your kitchen and eat them, you'd, yeah, you wouldn't be thinking they were that tasty. But there's just something about being on a wild camp. Any sort of food seems to taste good, <laughs> better than you expect. So anyway, after tea, I got the phone out and did some research on the weather and just sat and relaxed. It was lovely. I tell you what, that's a, that's a grand view. Over to the rest of Beniglow. Absolutely fabulous, and the light's starting to fade a bit, but there's a bit of a haze down towards where the sun's going down. But it's still catching the uh, other two Monroes on Beniglow. And it's quite a big, sort of sprawling massive, this. It's, it's about 40 kilometres squared, the area of Beniglow. It's a fairly impressive mountain. It's probably one of my favourite mountains in the area. And it sits to the south of the Cairngorms, and I think it is included in the Cairngorms National Park. And legend has it, there's, there's 19 quarries within this massive, and, and the legend goes that a rifle shot in one quarry can't be heard in any of the other quarries. Don't know if there's any truth to that, but it's, uh, it's something which has been said more than once, and it's, it's in all the books anyway about Beniglow. And Queen Victoria also came and she, she cast her eyes and gave her opinion in Glen Glow apparently on one of her trips up Glen Tilt, which is just to the north there. She came up and uh, had a statement, can't remember what she said, something something along the lines of, what a beautiful mountain. <laughs> however, however she may have seen it, say it, said it, but it certainly is a beautiful mountain and uh, I don't think I'm going to get my sunset tonight unfortunately, but it's still nice. It's a bit blowy, a bit hazy. Um, it's that kind of, yeah, it's just, I, there's, there's ridges and ridges and ridges I can see going north. So I might, I might get some good photographs, who knows, but it's just beautiful. I'm just going to enjoy it. Not sure how much sleep I'm going to get because it is rather breezy. Lovely. Look at that. So I had a bit of time to kill before sunset. So I went about sort of scouting out the area for some photographs and set the tripod up and thought I'd try and get some pictures of Benaglo, which seemed to be the best view from up here, looking over to the, the higher two peaks of the mountain massif. Taking some photographs, I just spent time wandering around the summit and looking out to all these amazing views. As I said before, you can see away up into the Cairngorms and then west you look over to the, the other Perthshire hills, the, the most famous of which is probably Shehalion and Glen Lyon and these sort of places. It was absolutely lovely. But that cloud seemed to be thickening and, and rolling in from the east, diminishing my chances of a nice, nice sunset. a wee bit. I don't think I'm going to get much of a sunset as you can see behind me. The clouds kind of rolled in unfortunately. It's the first cloud 
in about four days. It's been really sunny and warm, and uh, yeah, the ground's actually really dry. Hopefully, there's not any more wildfires. But I could, I mean, I was walking about with just my bare feet earlier on. Uh, it was a bit rocky though, so I put, <laughs> put my socks and boots back on. But really, uh, a bit disappointing that we're not going to get nice skies. But doesn't doesn't mean to say that when I wake up in the morning, we won't get some lovely. Ah, what well, a lovely sunrise, hopefully. You never know, some of this cloud might drop down into the into the glens. There was one forecast a few days ago suggesting that there might be an inversion, but that forecast has changed. Might change again overnight, who knows? Anyway, I might get the camera out and take some snaps, but I'm not really expecting to catch anything too impressive. Still nice to be on top of I'm a Monroe for the night. <laughs> well, it will be if this wind drops down. Ooh. <laughs> Well that sunset happened, or not happened, <laughs> wasn't much going on, a bit, uh, bit grey and cloudy and what have you. And this hill, Carn Carnlea, or Carnlea, I think it's, I think it's pronounced Carnlea, uh, means the hill of the grey rocky greyness, <laughs> or hill of the grey rocky top or something like that. And it's certainly living up to its name tonight, that's for sure, it's, uh, there's it's very monochrome, shall we say, <laughs> very grey and very rocky. And Beneglow is the hill of the mist, that's, it. that's what that uh, translates to. And it's certainly quite misty, you'll not see it, but behind the cameras it's, uh, there's still a wee bit of haze which is dropping down to the valleys, which, yeah, that'd be nice if it, uh, it materialises into fog in the valleys for waking up tomorrow. But as for tonight, I think I'm just going to hit the hay, I'm going to go and snuggle up into my a sleeping bag and get warm and hope that I'm not kept awake too long with this wind. <laughs> anyway, night night, see you in the morning. Fingers crossed that it clears and we get a nice sunrise, eh? Time will tell. So at this time in Scotland, during the night, it very rarely gets absolutely pitch black. You usually have a wee band of light across the horizon. So all that was left for me to do now was to head to bed with my earplugs in and my eye patches and get set to get up nice and early the following morning with my fingers crossed for a nice sunrise. Four thirty the next morning and when I unzipped the tent, things were looking promising. It was certainly looking better than it had at sunset when I'd gone to bed the night before. What a lovely vista to wake up to. It's, uh, it's cold, <laughs> it's early, it's about quarter to five now and the sun is about to come up so I'm going to go take some photographs, I'm not even sure if I'm going to make a brew here, I might just straight camp and get cracked on down to the car because I'm cold, I didn't bring any gloves, my hands are freezing, <laughs> but things are looking promising, I'm looking out behind the camera where the sun's going to come up and there's a wee bit of pink in the sky, I don't think it's going to be a spectacular uh, sunrise, but it's certainly going to be nicer than the sunset last night. So let's go to enjoy this and then get off this hill and get down into some warmth. Woo! Freezing! <laughs> ah, right, let's go and get into some photographs. I got up and headed over to watch the sunrise and take some snaps. It was fantastic. What a place to be. Maybe you can't see, but that's the sunrise happened. Absolutely beautiful. Made it all worthwhile after that rather, well, shall we say, disappointing sunset last night. And it's lovely, the skies are blue. It's going to be another lovely day, especially further down. 
But I tell you what, the wind is biting, it's cutting right through me. <laughs> I am cold. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to straight camp as quickly as I can now that the sun's up. I get cracked on down, hopefully into the shade a wee bit, or into the shade, into the uh, shelter, should I say, down to the car and maybe get a brew on down there. Maybe take some photographs on the way down, but it's uh, it's a lovely morning, it's about quarter past five now, so it's still it's still early. But it's it's been been worth it, absolutely worth it. It's just magical. I'm looking out out across the Perthshire Hills and there's a there's a wee bit of mist sort of lying low down in the valleys and the sun's starting to cut through it. Beautiful. This is what it's all about really. All that pain and suffering, lugging that big <laughs> heavy Heavy bag up with the gear in it, the camera gear, and the camping gear, and the food. This is what it's all about. It's made it all worthwhile. So I might enjoy it for another 10 minutes and then get cracked on. Lovely. Look at that. Wow. I eventually pulled myself away from watching the sunrise and decided it was time to get the tent down and head off the hill. I always tend to yeah, dread taking the tent down, but it never it never ends up being as bad as I think it is. You know, you get you get the sleeping mat out, deflate that, get the camping gear out, get the sleeping bag out and then take the tent down. It's really quite a quick tent to put up and take down. And you know what? Although it was quite breezy and cold the sun was making it a lot nicer and before long the tent was being rolled up and put back into the backpack and I was soon ready to saddle that big pack and head down the hill to the car. It had been a fantastic adventure and although we didn't get a nice sunset, the sunrise more than made up for it and I was heading down the hill, a happy chap. <laughs> 